Hello and welcome back, it's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth and today we're going to be playing Last Resort. Now you can go with a few different ideas here, resort as in you know nice place, holidays and it just happened to be the last one on this island. I think I talked a little bit about you know our honeymoon in the past and Kosamui, that definitely comes to mind. Of course the other interpretation of all of this could be that uh, as a last resort, you're lost at sea and you're trying to get back home and here's some kind of abandoned lighthouse in the background and you're thinking that's the last resort, let's go and see what's in there even if it looks a little bit spooky, misty, etc. Uh, and you've got a map and a compass of course to navigate everything. Oh, that would be very handy. Now today's puzzle, I'll be honest with you, looks very tricky. I'm not entirely sure I will be able to solve it. It is only a two-star difficulty rated puzzle, but this looks just insane with the new rule sets that we're going to talk about in a second. Uh, but let me not keep you in suspense. Let me just bring up this puzzle and see if together, admittedly you're watching this after the fact, but you, you definitely tend to leave a bunch of comments around how I could have done better. but. Let's see if we can actually solve this one in a nice, elegant way. If you're feeling intimidated, um, that's good, because I am too. So, we're taking a look at Last Resort by Samu Piano and Sujoiku. And it's got this new rule set that I've never seen before, which is the P lines. I'll get onto that in a second, but let's talk about the rules that we are familiar with. First one, normal Sudoku rules apply. That is very so obvious. They said they just one to nine, one each in every row every column, and every 3 by 3 box. Region sum lines. So box borders divide the blue lines into segments with the same sum. Different lines may have different sums. And we have ridiculously long region sum lines today. So I'm looking for one that doesn't sh reveal too much. And I'm going to struggle with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ignore that the fact that these lines are quite long and maybe just focus on, you know, a couple of branches of it. Essentially, these two cells are going to come up to a value. Let's say that this is two and three. So they come up to five. Well, these two cells have to also add up to five and it could be one, four, for example. And that's kind of the gist of it. These three cells would have to add up to five. This would be five. And that's the rest of that line. And obviously, these don't have to add up to the same number. They don't have to add up to five. So they're all independent of one another. Of course, they could have the same region sum, but they don't have to. Right, P lines. This is the bit that just concerns me. So the sum of the digits on a line strictly between two circles is equal to a concatenation of the two values in the circles in some order. So for instance, um, and we don't actually have one that is as short as the example that's given, but if you imagine that one of the circles is three, and I'm going to add another circle in here to sort of match the example. So just ignore the rest of this line. So one side is three, one side is one, and in the middle, we've got three, four, six. Ignore the Sudoku rules as well. So that works because you add up the three, four, and six to get to 13, and essentially, you concatenate these two numbers in some order. So, of course, it could be 31 or it could be 13, one before the three. And that would work because 3, 4, 6 does add up to 13. And 1 and 3 could be brought together to add up to 13, well, to actually be 13. Note, the bounding circles are not part of the region sum lines. So, essentially, the three cells in the middle between the circles, they add up to a value and then the value is what you need to be able to show in two-digit form between these circles. Got it? Well, I hope so because I'm barely surviving here. Inequality. The greater sign is a greater than and points to the lower digit. You've got one of them in here. So if you imagine that this cell is a two, for this one, it has to be less than the two, it would be one. Of course, if that's one, that could be absolutely anything, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and they're all greater than one. So that's the, all the rules we have for today. So if you want to play along and you're not anywhere near as intimidated as I am right now, link will be in the description down below for you to do so. 
And with that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. Normally, after I've actually walked through the rules, I have a bit of an inclination about where to go. And I'm not really sure I do today. So I'll point out what has caught my attention. Row one has caught my attention because I know that essentially there is a region sum line that splits into three sections and doesn't include these two digits. So that's quite interesting. It's going to narrow down our options quite a bit. We'll take a look at that in a second. The other ones that also caught my attention is these region sum lines because they have one digit in one of the sections and they have three digits in another section. So I know that these values are six, seven, eight, or nine, and I know that they have to be a single cell value, sorry, a digit that can be written in a single cell. Obviously these lines where it's two cells and three cells, it could have a much larger sum. And of course in here, it would almost certainly be a much larger sum. But interesting, not sure how we can use it just yet. I think it's gotta be row one. Yeah, it's gotta be. Right, let's think about row one. So whatever these sums up to, whatever they sum up to, it has to be divisible by three because one sum is here, x, 2x, 3x. Now these, I'm, and I'm gonna include like a couple of extremes that are just nonsense. We know they're nonsense because one and two means that these are essentially summing up to 12 or 21, neither of which work. So actually that's quite a useful insight. And then the other one is of course, another extreme would be eight and nine, which would mean that these have to sum up to 98 or 89, which again is nonsense. But what I'm trying to do for now, before we sort of think through this a bit more, is just think around what is the possible maximum and minimum for these. So uh, obviously we know that the digits in row one are the digits one to nine. You add them all up, we're talking about 45. So the maximum I could make would be 45 minus these three. So essentially 42 is the maximum. And then the minimum would be 45 minus the 17 as in the eight, nine pair, and then divide that by three, whatever that is. 45 take away the 17, that is 28. Is that right? 28 plus 15 should get me to 42. I think it does, 38 plus five, I'm, I think I'm okay. 28 is not divisible by three, however. So I'm gonna to have to go for the next digit that is divisible by three, which would be 30. So essentially we've got these two extremes, 42 and 30. Now let's keep going. So essentially, with the exception of the 42, Where am I going with this? So I want to take all the example, all the possibilities and divide these by three. And remember that these are going to be the values. And the reason that, I don't know if that's interesting. I'm just going to just think about it for a second. So 10, 11, all the way up to whatever this is divided by three. It's not very big, is it? 14. So it's not that many options. And we already know that 42 is not going to happen because I can't write 42 using one and two. So technically I can essentially discount the 13 immediately. 30 would require two digits that add up to 15, six and nine, seven and eight. That doesn't work either, does it? Let me think this through. So if this is 30, so this is 10, this is 10, this is 10. We need to be able to represent 13 here. So I can't have a zero. Let's just delete that immediately. So I'm left with 11 and 12. Now I think 33 will be tricky because that would tell me that essentially I'd need a double three in here and that's impossible. So 11 is gone. 
12 with 36 would tell me that these have to be 3, 6. And they add up to 9, plus the 36, which is 12 times 3, is indeed 45. That was, I probably made this way, way harder than it should have been, but it's fine. Right. 12. So interestingly, I can I can keep going. And the reason I can keep going is I'm actually thinking about the 9. So the question about the 9 is, can I put it in these two cells? And the answer is no, because it would have to be accompanied with the 3 to add up to 12. And the 3 is taken. So this is going to have to be 1, 2, 9 to add up to 12. Then one of these is 4, 8. One of these is 5, 7. OK. Am I going to pencil mark them? I'm tempted to. I am tempted to. Why am I tempted to? Because I'm just trying to understand the interplay with these cells. And these cells, you know, whatever these are, they're in the same box as a whole bunch of things that I care about. So it's not my style, but 4857. Okay, let's keep going. Now, I think it's probably worthwhile thinking about rows 1 and 9 now. We're six minutes in and we're like nowhere near writing a digit at this point, but I am making progress. So I'm just, I am going to persist with this a bit. Let's have a think about this. So we have essentially 45, some of the digits one to nine in each column, minus a three or minus a six. So my sums are either 39, I can just write it in this way properly, or 42 which essentially tells me that one of these is 3, 9. It'll be essentially with the 6. It'll be 3, 9. And then the other side would be 4, 2. And the side that is, no, I can't say that for certain, because that could be the 2, so this, there's nothing wrong with this being 4, 8. What I can say is this is not 4, and therefore this is not 8. But I can't say a lot more than that, actually. Interesting. Right, this is interesting now. So we potentially have one, two, three, four lots of whatever this digit is, and they have to come up to something that I should be able to mix and match between them. Now, because they are four lots of something, it has to end in an even digit. You know, four times six is 24, four times seven is 28. You, you get the gist. And the even digit is here. These are both odd. So four times something, one of these six, seven, eight, nines ends with one of two or four. Now six ends in 24 in four, so that works. Seven ends in 28, that doesn't, so seven is out. Eight doesn't work, that ends in, not 36, 32. Eight does work, and then nine doesn't because that's 36. I meant to say 32, something like that. So nine is out. Interesting. Now, to get to 24, it would have to be a double 2, 4, and it doesn't work. So 6 doesn't work, 8 does, that would be 3, that would be 2, and we have our break-in. That is incredible. 8, 3, 2, 6, 3, we'll, we'll think through the mechanics of that in a second. Um, 9, 4, and we have an entrance. Wow. Right, two digits that add up to eight, and they're not two six, they're not three five, they can only be one seven. That removes the five seven option in here, which gives me eight and four. Obviously that four helped remove the four eight in the other way. This can't be eight four anymore, which could have easily determined that with that eight. This is five seven, but I can't figure out what this is. 
Fantastic. Now I seem to remember something about this. So we're adding up to 39. So that means each section is 13. Now two cells that add up to 13. Well, it's not six, seven, it's not five, five, eight. Um, it can only be four, nine. And then these two digits, in fact, that just gives me a two and a one, right? This section now adds up to 42, which means each segment adds up to 14, wasn't it? 14 in two cells, well, it's not six, eight. This is five, nine, and I can't actually determine which one it is, but it does give me another digit with a six. Okay, so I'm going to clearly have to take back what I said. This is a genius puzzle. This is a phenomenal puzzle. Two cells that add up to eight, uh, and they're not two six, and they're not one seven. This is another, I say another, that wasn't three five, so it's not another. This is not a six because that's not six. Can I actually figure out what these are? Maybe it includes a two. Right, let, let's... We'll do some maths in a second. Can I do more here with the 14? Right, I think I can. So essentially, one and two can't be grouped together. If I put them in the same segment, this one would have to be 11 plus the three to get to 14. So essentially, one segment has one, one segment has two. The one that has one needs two cells that add up to nine not nine three, not five seven. So essentially it would be something like one four eight. And then the other segment would be two five seven. And I actually got it right because the three five in here is forcing this to be the two five seven. That removes seven as an option from this one. And one four eight is in here. Uh, let's see if I'm as lucky in here. So we're adding up to 13. Same logic works. Isn't it? 13, yes. If I try and put the one and two together, it'll be a 10. So one of them has a one and one of them has a two. Now the one would need a 12 and four eight is not available. Nine three is not available. So the one would be joined with a five seven. And then the two would go with the remainder, which is two, three and eight. Hopefully that does add up to 13. Yes, it does. Of course, this time I'm not as lucky. I don't have the three five pair to help me. Almost, almost, almost. What I'm thinking is this is eight or nine. And therefore potentially I have to force a one in here on these three cells. And therefore, interesting. So if this is two, three, four, I can get away with one, five, seven. If this has a one, I would have to put the two, three, and eight in here. And then, let me come on, I'm making the assumption that this is nine. It's not a good assumption. But I, actually, I don't think it can be, it can't be eight. So let's think about the options for eight for a second. Eight and three cells, I only have three options, two options, one, two, five, and one, three, four. If this is eight, I'm going to have to put one of these options on these three cells. Now, one, two, five, and one, three, four, obviously immediately discounts this option. And then I would have to put the two, three, eight in here, which would conflict with either the two or the three. I wouldn't be able to make eight work at all. So this is nine. And I feel like I'm in trouble. One, two, three. Oh, so I only need to get to 27. That's fine. 20. That's seven, that's one, that's seven. Now, uh, I think I actually luckily got them the right way around. Let me just show you why I think that. Ignore the two, three option for a second because I think this is what this is. The other options that include a one would be one, two, six, or one, three, five. There's no other option. Now, if I use either of these, the same challenge that I had with the eight in that I am using one and two or one and three. 
So essentially, the 1 would always discount the 157, and the 2 and the 3 will always discount one, the 238. So there wouldn't be any way of meeting this. So this is, in fact, 234. Uh, this is a 23 pair. That's a 4. I'm loving this puzzle now. We're like we're nearly there. I'm, okay, we have very little information written on the grid, so I appreciate we're not nearly there. But the fact that I've put in so many of these digits and I know what they're adding up to, I'm feeling confident. Let me put it that way. Now this one I'm less confident about because I could have a two-digit sum in here, unlike these which were restricted. Let's have a think about it. Or am I, like, I'm probably doing this prematurely. I should just do a bit of Sudoku. I should do a bit of Sudoku, all right. Uh, let's have a think. Well, the three is definitely in here. In fact, the three and five are, no, not five. Three is definitely here. One is definitely there. Two, oh, no, I've got two. So one, two, three, four, five. Where is six? Six is definitely here. Seven is there. This is eight. Lovely. That will give me another digit in here two and a couple of I think it's five no it's not five and six I've made a mistake what mistake that I can't see I'm repeating something no it's all going too well to be a mistake at this point essentially I was thinking where is six in here and I couldn't place it so that's a bit awkward. And that's a bit awkward because I clearly repeated the digit in here. I must have. Because I didn't use the six at all. So what digit did I repeat? Yeah, I, I did some very strange maths here. So I said something about the one then I needed 13. So it wasn't 12. Right. 13 without 9 and 4, 5 and 8 would make it 6, 7. And that 7 would mean that the 1, 6, 7 is down here. And goodness me, what is that 2 there? How did I place it? I don't remember. And this is, I think it was... Bad Sudoku, and this is now two four eight. I think that is correct now. That makes this a one, just Sudoku. And these two cells are known now. They are six and nine. And then these two are known as well. Well, these are also known, they're two and eight, and these are one, two, three, five. I got very lucky here that it didn't have, like I didn't have to unwind a lot of what I was doing. That one removes a one here, and actually removes a one from there, and that seven gives me a five. I'll take it. I'm just gonna double check my maths here in case I made a silly mistake. That is definitely 13, that is definitely 13, that is definitely 13, and they do add up to 39. Right, that's fine. Uh, where am I going with this? So I did the Sudoku because I was trying to limit my options for these circles, and that will probably help me figure out what these sums are. So I am going to keep going, see if I can do more. So the 8 is not here. Right, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, 9 is not here, that's 9. This is 6, 8, which also gives me, well, I was a bit awkward with the 5, 7. So I have another 5, 7 and another digit. I think it's a 1. So 1, 5, 7. And then I have another 5, 7, plus whatever the remaining digits are. 4 and 6, I'm going to say. Yeah, I'm not sure this is a good idea, but let's go with it. Right, so we have 2868. Let's think about this. 
So we have something that is, we have two lots of whatever this is. And one can't be part of the equation because the maximum I could do would be one and seven to get to eight, and then another eight, which would get to 16, and one is not an option in here. So I'm pretty sure one is out, which places a one here. So it is five, seven plus something. And let's think about extremes for a second, just to kind of put some boundaries. So five and seven, no. Seven and six, as in 13, is the largest I could make. And then four and five, as in nine, is the smallest I could make. Nine doesn't work again for the same reason. This would be 18, and I can't have a one in here. So nine doesn't work. 10 doesn't work because it would be 20 and I don't have zero. 11 is a problem. No, it's not a problem because it would be 22, which doesn't work. So I think it's 13. It's got to be the two in here and the six there. 12 would be 24 and I don't have a four. So it is 13 and therefore this is eight. No, six, I meant to say, two, eight to get to 26, 13 times two. That's eight, and uh, I don't know if that's given me any more digits, it's fine. Right, now to get to 13 in these two cells, it has to be seven and six that way around. Nothing else is big enough. This is not six or seven, this is a four, five pair, which gives me seven at the top and five in here. 13, oh, this is a four, excuse me, that is just five, and that's four. Excellent. Right, um, we're getting somewhere. Can this be, so we can think about that nine, I've ignored it for a while, and that eight, I've ignored that for a while, but, or we could just do Sudoku. I mean, so many options at this point, but like I said, I think we've got it, not eight. I'm not sure there's more Sudoku there. Uh, six gives me seven. Why did I remove the yeast? Oh yeah, one and six, that makes seven. Sorry, I'm just double checking. It'd be really unfortunate to make at this point, at this like this late in the game when everything's going so smoothly. Wouldn't be beyond me, let's be fair. Eight. Right, um, nine in three cells is probably the easier one, as is the eight, so I should probably think about these first. So I need to have a one. And then my options are one, two, five, one, three, four. And I'll be honest, I mean, that would mean that this is two because it can't be five or three, four. And then the one would be one, five if this is two or one with three or four. It's just, it's too many options, it's messy. Maybe there's more Sudoku I'm missing. Very high chance there's more Sudoku I'm missing. That's how I think about these. Could these be two, three, four? That would be the four. This would be a two, three pair. That would make this eight, five, and then one or six. It's fine. 13 in three cells. Let's think about that. Now, there's got to be easier ways than what I'm doing. Um, I'm just going to scan quickly for any obvious Sudoku that will limit my options a bit. Nothing's jumping out at me. I'm kind of half tempted to just, you know, brute force it, which is essentially what I was doing. So let's think about this. I've got one, two, three, six. The only thing that I can guarantee in here is a seven. Really not that great. If I put a seven in here, I'd need to have two digits that add up to six. So it'd have to be one, two, which would be down here with four or five. Possible. Right, what about this one? I've got three, five, eight plus another digit that is definitely in here, a four. 
If there's a four in here, these two cells would have to add up to nine. One eight is out, four five is out. Um, two seven looks like it works and three six also works. Okay. What about in here? One, two, three, five, six, eight. Essentially, there, is, there isn't even a single guaranteed digit in here. That's awkward. Two, three, four, eight. There is something in here, and it's a nine, and it can't be on this cell. Yeah, I'm back to thinking my eight, the 8 is my best option, but I'm just going to see if I can eliminate anything else. For example, I can't see a 6 in any of these. So there's a 6 in here, but there's definitely a 6 not on the line. Um, the rest are possible 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 7, 8, and 9. Yep. And then up here... Got one, two, three, four, five, I, six. I don't see seven. So the only thing I can see is seven is on the greater than or on the equality sign. Now, if seven is here, that would be eight, and this would just unravel a whole bunch of things, I hope. This got very tricky suddenly. I'm just going to double check the lines, the rules again, just in case I've missed something or I rushed through it, but I don't think I have. And, you know, pencil marking up here in box two just feels like a waste of time, if I'm honest. Right. Options. So pencil mark away. Four, two, three, eight, five, one, six, one, six. Solid option. There's another option, of course, where there is a one on the line, and it's either one, two, six. So that would have to, oh, that can't be possible because none of them can be here. So it would have to be one, three, five. The one wouldn't be here. This would be three, five, and this would be one, three, five again. So essentially, it would remove the threes because they line up, and then it would have to be three in here, eight, and two, which is possible again. Sorry, one second. Sorry about that. Right. With these and the 13 now, can I do something with this? So one thing is, if it's 135 or 234, 3 is never on the 13 line. Kind of helpful. And I most have one of one or two. I'm leaning towards I have to have one of one or two because if I don't have one of one or two and the three is gone, then four, five, six would be next and then that would be too big. That's 15. So I have to have one of one and two, which will be down here. And two cells that add up to either uh, 11 or 12. Now, if it's 12, is 7, 5 a legitimate option anymore? Essentially, be 1, 7, 5, and then that would be 2, 3, 4. That actually all perfectly lines up. The other possibility... So let's just discount the 1 first. With 12, 5, 7 is solid. And 8, 4. 
No, because the f this couldn't be 4 or 8. I mean, this could be 4, but then I couldn't have an 8 in here. The 8 would have to hide there, and then the 4 would have to be down here, which doesn't work. And then 9, 3, that would be 9, that would be 3. But then if I use both the 1 and 3, the 3 is not available. We did say that. So 1, 5, 7 works. Now, 2 with 11. And to get to 11, 2, 9 is out. Obviously, I've used the 2. 3, 8 is not available. 4, 7 works. Does it? Yes, because 1, 5, 7 for the 13 with 2, 3, 4 works. And if I use a 2 with 4, 7, that would leave me the 1, 3, 5 option for the 9. So I've eliminated 2, 9, I've eliminated 3, 8, I've eliminated 4, 7. Can I do 5, 6? 2 with 5 and 6. So the 2 and 6 would have to be here. This would have to be the 5. But that breaks the 9 option. Because essentially, if I use 2, 5, and 6, then I can't use my 1, 3, 5 anymore on the 9. This is getting very complicated. So between... Am I imagining this, or are they always using the same digits, is the conclusion. And then I'm left with two digits that I'm not using, which is 8 and 9. 9 can't be here. That's 9. That's 8. That gives me another 9 in here. And then these are not 9s. This is 9. I'm going to remove my 1, 2 option at the bottom there. No, no, sleuth. You rushed it again. So I'm not using 6, 8, or 9. So that would be the 6. So, okay, because that's 8 and 9. The 9 would be in here. So that is still correct. That places another 9 in box 5, and then another 9 up here. Can I use this 8 somehow? Is that the point? And obviously none of these could be 8 on the line. That can't be 8 because that can't be 9. So that's another 8. And therefore that's another 8. Can I use the 6? Yes, I can. 6 is none of these. Sudoku can't be on the line because I'm not going to get to 8 anymore. That would be a double 1. That's 6. And I can probably push this a bit further. Yeah, um, I don't want to remove my pencil marks, but... Just know that this is a 6. The 8 in here and the 9 means that the 7 can't be on the lower side of the greater than symbol. So that has to be the 7. And therefore that 7 that was down here has to be in there. And that's not 7. That's 1, 2. And that 6 gave me 1, which gave me 2, which gave me 3, which gave me 8, which gave me 2. 2 in here means that this is 1, 3, 5. Uh, that's not the 1. And this is a 4. Now, I strongly suspect there was an easier way of making these deductions without the clearly very long route I've just taken. But it seems to be legitimate, and it's gotten me there. So the 8, I actually haven't resolved it, have I? It's still 1, 2. 2, 5, and 1, 3, 4 are still both options. Well, the 7 gives me a 1, and a 7 gives me another 1 in here. So, 2, 5, that would be 2, that would be 5. 3, 4, that would be 4, that would be 3. 2, 4 pair gives me 3 and 2. 4 and 2. Whoa, 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 whoa. Neither of where can I where am I placing my four? I made a mistake. Hang on, is that adding up to 13? Yes, yes, it's probably something I've done in here. Dear, oh dear.
So let me think this through again. I've always got one, two, three, four, five, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, and seven. And then the eight and nine always placed a six in here, which gave me a one. So this was always going to be two, seven. So I think this is solid. I'm going to just clean up the mess that I have up here. And then three, eight, and two is solid. Two, seven is nine. This has to be four. And this has to be one, three, five. Like I'm, I'm not seeing a mistake so far. And this would have to be six. Now, Sudoku says, not nines, nine. Nine, I can type. Uh, I'm going to clean these up as well. Don't need them anymore, hopefully. Six, six, and it can't be on the line. So I still have a problem with four. Unless it's in here, but I'm pretty sure the eight can't be on the line, can't be there, can't be here. That is solid, so four has to be here. There's no other place for it. And therefore this is one, three. And then the rest is two, five, seven, and the seven has to be, well, we don't know where it has to be just yet. But let's just, let's go with that. I don't know what type I've made to break it. Not eight, I mean the one gave me three and one, two and three, five and three, two, eight, four, seven and one, seven, and then five and two because of the greater than symbol, three, five, three, one, five, yeah, five, one, they're not, res yes they are. It probably was a typo, and it seems like all my deductions were sound. Wouldn't it be beyond me at all? Right, and um, three can only be in here, four can only be there, six is here, and if I've not made any other mistakes, seven for the finish. Uh, it is a stunning puzzle, Samo Piano and Sujoiko. It really is intimidating when you first look at it because concatenating two numbers is not something that is, you don't come across it very often. But once you just sort of trust it and take a look at where the puzzle is leading you, it's just fantastic. I'd love to see this rule again. I'd love to absolutely play it again. And I am sure somewhere in the comments tomorrow, will be a few tips about how I didn't need these shenanigans with the 9 and a 13 line to be able to resolve it. But probably that's what kind of pushed it over to two star as well. Hope that you guys enjoyed the puzzle and video. Um, phenomenal puzzle. And uh, more coming this weekend. Bye-bye for now.